Use inverse trig to find all solutions to each of these equations. Work in radians the whole time. Don't just solve in degrees and then convert your final answer to radians. Round your answers to the nearest hundredth. Number one, sine of 3x equals 0.7. Okay, so first we will take the inverse sine of both sides. Here's something we can use the calculator to get a decimal for. Because we're going to hit one of these trig buttons, you got to make sure you're in the right mode. This problem should be in radians, so check that you're in radians. So we're doing inverse sine of 0.7. And we get this. Um, the problem said uh, round your answers to the nearest hundredth. Uh, let's see here. So this means that 3x is approximately uh, 0.7. So if you round here to the hundredth, then you might have rounding errors later on. So I'd encourage you to go like to one or two places past where I suggest that you round and then round your final answers only at the end of the problem to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so that is um, that. Is that. And then uh, at this moment, we'll find the other fundamental solution. 0.7754 is one of two fundamental solutions. So to find the other one, we'll draw a quick unit circle. 0.7754 is in the first quadrant. Hopefully you understand why that's true. And this is a sine problem, and we know that the sine is related to the y value. And so we're looking for another point on this unit circle with the same y value, and it's over here. So we'll draw that same blue line and use the symmetry to know that this angle on this side is also 0.7754, which means that the real angle that we want must be um, pi minus 0.7754. pi is half a revolution. Okay, so we can type that in here, second pi minus second answer. And we get 2.3662. So let's go ahead and write that over here. So that means that our other fundamental answer is 2.3662. At this stage, we've got to make sure that we put in the plus 2 pi k. Can't do it later, you got to do it right here. So we'll put that in both. That's our way of saying that we can go around as many revolutions as we want and then eventually land on one of these fundamental solutions. And then the last step is to solve for the variable, x in this case. So we'll divide everything by 3. Let's go ahead and divide this answer here by 3. And we'll have that. And then we'll divide the other one by 3. And we get that, and so we will incorporate those two answers into our final answers over here. So x is 0.2, and then round it to the hundredth, 0.26, plus 2 pi k divided by 3. Remember, every term has to get divided by 3. And then in the other one, x is, divide that one by 3, we can see 0.79 when we round, plus 2 pi k over 3. Okay, moving on. Cosine 5x minus 6 equals negative 0.2. Take the inverse cosine of both sides. And then we're going to go ahead and use our calculator to get the first fundamental solution. And then we'll use symmetry to get the other fundamental solution. And we'll follow the same process we just did. So here we're going to do inverse cosine of negative 0.2. We get 1.77 radians. So let's go ahead and write that here. And then we'll draw a unit circle to figure out exactly where this is. So 1.77 is in the second quadrant. Hopefully you'll understand why that's so. So that angle is 1.77. Um, we know that we need uh, cosine in this case, and cosine is the x, so the x is important. There's the x. This point on the unit circle has the same x, so the real angle that we're interested in must be related to that point down there. 
So if it's a 1.77 on that side, um, then we can figure out, or I guess we could just use symmetry and know that this is also 1.77. Although, now that I think about that, I'm not going to do it that way because that's different from what we've been doing. We've been thinking about reference angles every time, so let's continue to do that. So the reference angle is this guy in here, and that must be pi minus the 1.77. Okay, so the reference angle is that 1.37-ish. And so that's here. And what we're interested in is then to put that same red angle in here by symmetry. And so then the angle that we're actually interested in is this one going all the way around that must be pi plus the 1.369. So the purple angle. It was roughly 4.511. Okay, so that's our other fundamental answer. And at this moment, we'll stick on the plus 2 pi k. And then we're going to solve for x finally at the end of this problem. So we're going to add 6 and then divide by 5. So let's add 6 to both of these guys first. So we'll write this in a different color here. So adding 6 gives us... 7.7722 plus 2 pi k. Adding 6, the 6 doesn't get added to the 2 pi k. It's just add 6 to the right-hand side and then combine the like term with the 1.77. And then the same idea on this one. We'll add 6 here. And then the last step is to divide everything by 5. So let's use the calculator to divide by 5. So uh, we need to do 7.7722 divide by 5. And then the same thing with the 10.511. So those are our two answers. So this one says that x is equal to 1.55 rounded to the nearest hundredth plus, and then this guy also gets divided by 5. And down here, 2.10 plus 2 pi k over 5. Number 3, negative 5, sine 3x plus 4 equals 3.7. So the first step is to um, isolate the trig function. So that negative 5 is no good. We need to move it to the other side by dividing both sides by negative 5. Okay, so let's... Do this calculation here. So negative 0.74 inverse sine of both sides. And then we'll type that into the calculator to get one fundamental solution, and then we'll use the unit circle to get the other fundamental solution. So inverse sine of negative 0.74. So the first solution is that number. And then we'll draw a quick unit circle over here. Okay, uh, negative 0.83. Hopefully you see that that's in the fourth quadrant. So here's our, I'll just call it 0.83. And... Um, this is a sine problem, and sine is related to the y. So we grab the y value and find the other point on the unit circle with the same y value. 
I'll draw that blue line and then by symmetry know that this is also a 0.83 in here. And so then the actual angle that we're interested in must be pi plus the 0.83. Okay, so we're going to do pi plus 0.833. Okay, so 3.9747. Again, using more decimal places than the problem requires, and then we'll round our final answers at the end. Okay, so we'll grab that answer as our other fundamental solution. At this moment, we got to stick on the plus 2 pi k. And only at the end do we actually do the solving for x. So we're going to need to subtract 4 and divide by 3 in that order. So let's go ahead and do the subtract 4 first. All right. Good enough. Okay, and then we're going to take each of these things and divide by the 3. So divide this one by 3, and then I'll retype the other one. And divide that by 3. And then we'll just write our final answers here. So the first one is uh, actually written second up there, right? So negative 1.61 plus, don't forget, this guy also gets divided by 3. And then the last one rounds to negative 0 0.01 plus 2 pi k over 3. Okay, next page, number 4. 9 cosine 2x minus 1 minus 4 equals 4.1. So again, isolate the trig function first. So we need to add 4 and then divide by 9. We'll go ahead and um, take inverse cosine of both sides. You can type the 8.1 over 9 into the calculator now, but I'm going to hold off until I've got it inside of the inverse cosine. So from here, we're going to get two different equations. Change color. So it's going to be 2x minus 1 equals whatever the calculator says, and then 2x minus 1 equals the other fundamental solution. We'll use symmetry there. Okay, so we wanted the inverse cosine of 8.1 over 9. Okay, so about 0 0.5410. Try again, 0 0.4510. Okay, so we'll draw our unit circle. And 0.45 is in the first quadrant. This is a cosine problem, so that's the x. So we got to grab that x, and then the other point with the same x. By symmetry, this is also a 0.45. So then the angle I'm going to write down will be this one, which is equal to 2 pi minus 0.45. Okay, so let's write that as our other fundamental solution. Okay, and then at this moment we stick on the plus 2 pi k. 
And then finally, at the end, we get to solve for x. So we're adding 1 and then dividing by 2. So add 1 here. And then add 1 to the other. And then finally divide by 2. Okay, so there's one answer, and there's the other. And when we divide by 2 here, the 2's cancel. Last one, number 5, negative 3 sine 2x minus 1 minus 5 equals 2.6. So again, first isolate the trig function. We're going to need to add 5 to both sides. And then divide both sides by negative 3. Okay, and then we'll take inverse sine of both sides, although if you're on the ball, you might already recognize there's a problem here. And then we'll type this thing into the calculator. Inverse sine of 7.6 divided by negative 3. And let me just say, if you have small children around, turn them away from the computer screen at this moment. Error domain. Okay, so for the first time, we've taken inverse sine and gotten this error. So what's going on? Okay, let's quit out of here, and let's actually just take a look at 7.6 over negative 3, negative 2.5. That's the problem, is that we talked a little bit about um, how the domain of inverse sine is negative 1 to 1. You can't find an angle whose sine is negative two and a half. You can't find an angle whose sine is anything less than negative one. If you think about the sine graph, it bounces up and down between minus one and one, and there's no way to find an angle whose sine is this number here, the negative 2.53. So we can just say that, and you know, I mean, if you get that error on your calculator, that's probably what's going on, but we'll just say that inverse sine of negative 2.53, is undefined since negative uh, 2.53 is smaller than negative 1. It would also be a problem if we typed in a number bigger than positive 1.